So I'm going to talk, this is my favorite part, this is the part I like about this talk and stuff, this is the toolkit of regenerative farming practices. And this is just a sampler, there's lots more of these that I won't cover that I could talk about for six or seven days and none of us want that to happen right now. So, um, um, there are lots of traditional crops, perennial crops people grow on, apples, raspberries, what have you. That's great, we need to keep that up and we need to do more of it. If we stopped shipping apples here from everywhere else in the world because it became too expensive or because uh, there was a carbon tax or whatever other kind of things, that we, we could have room for a lot more orchards. Um, <laughs> all right, key line. This is something I'm not an expert on, but I'm really looking forward to taking a workshop on it this winter. Keyline is another system out of Australia who are really leading the planet on regenerative farming systems for the broad scale arable type farming. Um, Keyline is, a, is a, it's another subsoiling system or sort of, it looks, it's much like a, a no-till uh, system, but it has much deeper harrows. Basically, it makes deep, deep, narrow channels underground um, it, it goes in something like you pull behind a tractor and it kind of goes slightly off contour so it breaks compaction. It funnels water to the, um, the outer part of ridges so it takes water from where it's wetter to where it's drier. Um, you can do a thousand acres in a summer so it can be done at a very large scale um, and it's a phenomenal soil builder, absolutely phenomenal soil builder. This is another thing that's proven it really works. We know it has an impact, and I think this should be done on a massive scale everywhere on the planet that we can do it. Um, this is what it looks like from above. That's a really nice uh, key line farm in, um, in Australia. So, um, I got my next one. There we go. Biochar. Um, it's another great tool that, if misused, could be a disaster like anything, like giant commercial scale, organic, that exploits workers or whatever else, right? Biochar, is, it's an indigenous traditional practice from the Amazon that goes back thousands of years. Basically, it's incorporating small pieces of charcoal in, in a large quantity into the soil where the carbon is held for a long, 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 long time. And it makes a really fantastic little apartment complex for all those soil food ecosystem organisms down there to hang out in. Now there's people who are upset about biochar in that, uh, some people are talking about implementing this on a vast scale, buying up a bunch of land in the developing world, doing biochar on it, and basically kicking people off of land that could be growing food for people. I don't think that's a good idea. I like perennials, but I don't think palm oil plantations on thousands of hectares of former rainforest is a good idea either, right? This stuff has to be done in moderation as part of a sensible program. But biochar is really cool technology that can do can do a bunch. Uh, coppicing. This is there's a great workshop coming up on this uh, Sunday, and um, coppicing is an ancient technique that appears to have been used in many many different regions of the world. Uh, essentially, again, is you cut down woody plants that resprout and they resprout, and you use the wood or the foliage for various things. On the left, I believe those are chestnut which can be used for biofuel, can be used for building 10 million things. Um, and on the right we have the edible leaf mulberry, which is very, very exciting. Uh, um, some mulberry varieties are very high in protein, excellent food for people. So this is a system in Mexico, those are acacia trees growing over it that are fixing nitrogen. The strips of coppice mulberry, they're planted about a foot apart within the rows, and um, they're cut and managed, oh, they're on contour, and they're cut and managed for food for people and food for livestock and food for silkworms. Um, so that's a super interesting, the coppice just has tremendous power because although you're cutting the above ground growth, the roots stay in place. So it's holding the soil in place and the root carbon is staying in place. So even if you burn the top growth, the roots stay under there and about 50% of the carbon that's sequestered in a plant is in the underground growth. So that's quite, quite significant. Commercial food forestry, this is my favorite one, you know. Um, this is my friend uh, Roberto's place in, uh, in the highlands of Guatemala, up at 2,800 meters, 2,700 meters, which is way, way high up. Um, and he's got rows of trees, basically an alley crop system, where the, uh, the plants in the alleys, the crops in the alleys are also perennial. So his trees are avocado, macadamia, mulberry, fig, peach, nitrogen-fixing alders, very nice. And then in the rows in between, he has perennial cut flowers. 
perennial medicinal plants, perennial forages, and perennial vegetables. So it's an all perennial system. And uh, it's a market garden system. He makes money, he sells his stuff. And he came up with it because he was away doing extension work all the time, and he couldn't be home to take care of stuff. So he developed this over 20 years. And it's absolutely phenomenal. It's one of those places where people independently create permaculture on their own. It happens all over the place. Anyway, so I think this is an absolutely phenomenal model, and we'll talk a bunch about this at some of the workshops. Too.